you see him? This one kind of fired me up because you you can't you can't tell me just because someone shoots a deer with an AR-15 that you can't eat it when it's not even around. That's so if you shoot with an AR-15, let's say you shoot a deer, you can't can eat it right? because you basically demolish the animal. Well, what's up, guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead, and uh, the sun's out, the wind's blowing. It's a glorious, cold fall Oklahoma day. Oh, check it out! DJ let me uh, break out some of our Christmas launch merch. Got a new, a new hoodie. I love the color. I'm a green guy. She makes on me. I wear green, green shirts, green hoodies. I like green. Anyways, ArmsFamilyHomestead.com. Obviously, it's not available yet, but will be November seventeenth. She's going to go through the whole process of showing you all the stuff, probably on her channel. I'll do your best. But anyway, so I typically don't talk about too many controversial things on video. I just kind of stay out of the politics and, you know, controversy, controversial topics. It's just not where I like to live. But the other day I was watching a video. So I watched this channel called uh, Officer Tatum. He does commentaries on different things, hot topics. And uh, obviously he used to be a police officer and is now full-time on social media and probably doing other things. But he was showing this video uh, from an episode of The View. <laughs> I don't like the word triggered. The, these women were triggered, <laughs> I guess you'd say. Uh, and then I know, listen, I'm going to explain a few things just because I want to talk about it. I want to give my spin on this. I don't watch The View. I don't agree with all the ladies on The View. But I don't hate them, huh, you know. But uh, they, they're very opinionated, very liberal, opinionated ladies that are speaking about things they know nothing about. And to that, I say they need to stay in their lane. Because when the ladies on The View are talking about deer hunting, mm, I'm going to get fired up. Okay, so let's talk about this situation. Now, I probably can safely say most of my viewers are probably more on the conservative side, less on the liberal side. A lot of my viewers may not be deer hunters, but they're at least educated on things of the such. But I'm fired up about this. And I brought some examples out just to talk about it, just to show you in case you don't really know. Like I was talking about this to my wife and she had a little bit of confusion. But those ladies are wanting to put a ban on assault rifles and I'm not even talking about that right now. I'm not talking about that most people are confused with AR-15. They think that stands for assault rifle 15. That's not it. That's not it at all. And the fact that they can just blanket say that an AR-15 can't be a sporting rifle is wrong, completely wrong. But what they don't know, that they literally said, if you shoot a deer with an AR-15, you can't even eat it because you destroyed it. If you shoot an animal with an AR-15, you can't eat it. Sarah didn't get a chance to weigh in on the uh, topic of what happened in Maine and uh, AR-15s. Yeah, I, I would love to see an assault weapons ban. Like President Reagan, I don't believe they're a sport or hunting um, uh, instrument. It's like shooting fish in a bucket, but that's my But take. also, if you shoot with an AR-15, let's say you shoot it's a deer, you, you can't can eat it. Right, because you basically demolish In addition the to that, but the hunt yeah. is about an actual difficult process, not massacring bodies of any kind. An AR-15, for the most part, shoots... I mean, there's a couple different options, but let's just for general ease of conversation, shoots a very small round, a very small bullet, about a 55-grain projectile. This is a two two three round, okay? Very small bullet. That's a 55-grain bullet the projectile is the only thing this little copper tip right here is the only thing that comes out when you shoot the rest of this is just a casing that holds powder okay that's what they say we shouldn't be deer hunting with because it's going to destroy and mangle an animal okay that's a very small bullet in a lot of states it's not even legal to harvest a deer with a 223 some states it is oklahoma it is but there are still states where this isn't even classified as a large enough round to shoot a deer. Okay, let me show you a few other things. So we're worried about the 223 round, the 5.56. 5 okay, we're worried about this destroying and mangling deer. It shouldn't even be legal to hunt with. 
So here's just a simple example. This is the broadhead that the same style of broadhead that Houston shot his deer with. Um, obviously makes a large cut, a large wound. There, That's just one style. There's about 50 different options when it comes, to, well, there's probably more than 50. There may be 100 different options when it comes to broadheads for archery. This is what we use to fix blade broadhead. Remember, this little copper bullet that's in the end of this cartridge is what they're super concerned about and it won't focus on it. There we go. That little copper part is what they're concerned about. So there's a broadhead for archery. Um, obviously gonna do a tremendous amount of damage. All right, so the next one we have here is, this is the round that my kids hunt with, okay? This round is a 6.5 Creedmoor, all right? That's about 125 grain bullet, 55 grain bullet out of the 223. So, obviously, a larger round. Now, next we have a 30 6 And anybody that's over the age of about 40 probably grew up very familiar with a 30 6 Tremendously larger round. Tremendously more power. Uh, that's like a 180 grain bullet. Just that part is all we're talking about. 180 grain versus the 55 grain. Now, a lot more powder in there means we're going to be shooting with a lot more power right now i'm not a ballistics expert don't claim to be don't want to be but which one of these do you think is going to do the most damage obviously the bigger bullet more power more powder next and then finally our tiny little 223 round okay that's what's this we need to ban these they say because they, you can't even eat a deer if you shoot them with an AR-15. So if you shoot with an AR-15, let's say you shoot it's a deer, you, you can't can. eat it. Right, because you basically demolish it. In addition to that. So that leads me up to the current hunting season that we're in right now. It's called muzzleloader season or black powder season, which is more of the traditional, what you would think of like an old musket gun. Uh, traditional muzzleloaders are you know, loaded from the end of the barrel. They're not a bullet. They're not a casing. But um, they're big, okay? Now, the, the newer style are called inline muzzle loaders. Shoot a little bit different round. When I grew up, muzzle loader season was just a round musket ball. You poured powder down the barrel, crammed it down in there, packed it in, put a cap, a primer cap on it, and you hoped it went off, okay? New inline muzzle loaders are a little bit different, but we are in muzzle loader season. Houston and I are planning on going hunting this evening with a muzzle loader, okay? So. 223, AR-15 shoots this round. You know, it's devastating. That we, apparently, we can't eat it there if we hunt with this. 6.5 Creedmoor, 30 6 and then you bump up to the muzzle loader. So the way this is loaded, it's no different than this, okay? This bullet has a primer cap in the end of it, which is what this is right here, okay? Primer, primer. This has a casing. Obviously, muzzle loader doesn't. So here's our black powder. That's what's inside of these and then the actual bullet itself this is what we're shooting at an animal right 55 grain 125 grain 180 grain 230 grain bullet and we're worried about a 55 grain ar-15 bullet causing so much devastation that we can't eat a deer so i say all of that to say <laughs> Ladies, stay in your lane. <laughs> ladies of the view, not you guys, not my followers. But I don't want anybody to get confused because the ladies on the view are very strongly opinionated. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But they're attempting to sway people's opinion about deer hunting, about a subject that I would venture to say no lady on the view has ever done. And they're trying to sway people's opinions who don't deer hunt and they're trying to get it set get laws set in place based off of their opinions that are not fact based and they do carry weight their opinion carries weight they're just they just need to stay in their lane on this one i, I don't watch the view i don't get into I, I don't agree with those ladies but i'm not gonna bash them however this one kind of fired me up because you you can't 
you can't tell me just because someone shoots a deer with an AR-15 that you can't eat it when it's not even a round that's large enough to be considered a legal round for taking deer in some states, in a lot of states. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It's not fact-based. They have no idea what they're talking about. They need to stay in their lane. So, let's go do something else and get off our soapbox. Well, it never fails. That's how it goes, right? No more than I just got started doing something at the house. Uh, my buddy called text, actually, and said, Hey, I'm on my way with some uh, gravel deliveries. So he's got a 10-wheeler, and he's hauling some gravel in so we can have a little bit of a driveway that's not a mud hole. Now, obviously, we've got some tree trimming that needs to be done, and I'm kind of planning on making this whole area right here a gravel parking area so that we can at least get in the building and not be a muddy mess. Yeah, we've got kind of a, a muddy mess over here right now. But uh, he's not going to be able to tailgate it out and smooth it all out. We're just going to dump it in a pile, and I'll, I'll bring the skid steer over here and do all the, the rock work after it dries up. There's no reason to try to get off in the mud right now. So at least we'll have some gravel here, and we can have a, a decent place to park for a while. you have it one load down i think he's gonna haul three today for me so one here one here and then we're just gonna put a pile off to the side so that uh we have plenty to to work with and uh not not play in the mud so not gonna be doing it today but maybe tomorrow See the cat? Oh, kitty, kitty. We had a cat in the dumpster. Earl, don't be getting no ideas about chasing a cat, okay? Telling you what, <laughs> I think that backpack, backpack leaf blower is probably one of the best investments I've ever made. You know, I used to struggle fight blowing leaves for weeks on end and using rakes, and I've even used a landscape rake on the back of my tractor. That backpack blower is a time saver, and uh, we're not going to get them all at once. Leaves are still on the trees, but when it rains and those leaves that are on the ground get wet and get matted down, 
then it becomes a problem. So we're going to tackle it hopefully this year. A little at a time as the leaves fall, keep them blown away from the house. First and foremost, it's a fire hazard around here. When you get dry leaves blowing up against our house and we live in a forest, forest fires happen. And uh, obviously they'll mat down and suppress and kill what little bit of grass we have in the yard. I've tried everything. Like I've even tried the lawnmower, mulching them all up and all that, and that just becomes a mess. So anyways, I'm gonna feed the animals real quick, finish my chores, go pick up Houston from school, and we're gonna hit the deer woods for a little while. What you doing, Pepper? Hmm? Listen to those noisy geese? They need to find a new home, don't they? What's up, Charlie? You doing all right today? Got all the running out of your system? Hmm? You ain't got much to say, do you? What do you do, Larry Bird? Can you gobble for me? You're looking mighty fine today, if I do say so myself. Can you give me a gobble? Go. No gobbling? Thanksgiving's coming up soon, you know that, right? I mean, it's less than a month away. I'm just saying. We should probably have a goose for Thanksgiving, huh? Is that what your vote is? You vote we have a Thanksgiving goose? You quit talking? What's up, Larry? All right, man. Enjoy your dinner. I'm trying to get ready. Would you hurry up? We got we got deer to kill. Sorry. <laughs> Layering up, huh? Yeah. Well, I picked Houston up from school, and we came straight out here to Mill Creek. It's uh, 3.39. gets dark about... I don't know what time exactly sunset is, but right around 7, probably about the end of shooting light. We're fixing to hit daylight savings time. The end of daylight savings time, it's going to get dark really early. But uh, the bucks are on their feet. We're not getting many trail camera pictures at feeders and things. They've completely shut off on coming into feeders. But uh, they're bumping does, chasing does. The rut's probably not in full swing. But if you're not familiar with the rut's breeding season, so it kind of have like a pre-rut. And then you go into the rut and post rut. And right now we're kind of pre-rut, so the bucks are traveling. They've all split up and uh, looking for looking for a doe in heat to breed. So we're gonna go in here and get set up. We're hunting in the big shed blind. Probably not the best spot to be sitting. Obviously the deer, their patterns have changed, but I do think they're gonna be using the edge of that field. There's a lot of scrapes and things. They come up the edge of the field, cut across and uh, I just think that's probably our best bet this evening. And I don't know, wish us luck. Hopefully we see us a couple of deer. I'm not gonna see a, a high number of deer. I have no doubt that we're, you know, we're, we're probably not gonna see 10, 12, 15 deer. The does aren't gonna be able to come into the feet, into the uh, into the field and into our food plot and eat for an hour because the young bucks will be bumping them around. So we only need one. We're looking for a big guy. You finally ready, princess? Yeah. All right, let's go. Got on some layers today, huh? Yeah. Well, I don't think you're gonna get cold in this blind. No. It's gonna be nice and toasty in here, just like it is. But just in case, we've got some heat, but you're not gonna need it today. Yeah. It's like 40 degrees with a north wind, but the thing about being in here is the wind is completely blocked. Yeah. <laughs> we can hunt in here when it's like four degrees and be just fine yeah probably so we're gonna get settled in here for the evening we've got a we've got a few hours until dark um we're after a big buck here but some people have been asking why we don't harvest does and, and we, we do harvest does we, we haven't we haven't killed doe in a couple of years um but that doesn't mean we're not doing our best to harvest does on our property i i'd like to let other people come in that don't have opportunities to to harvest a deer and uh Last weekend, during the youth rifle season, my, my stepbrother and his son, our nephew, came out and he got to harvest his first deer ever. And uh, they weren't hunting on the Mill Creek property, they were hunting at our house. We just don't have a big doe population here, but at home, 
got a lot of does. And the goal is to keep your buck to doe ratio in check. You don't want way more does than bucks. But you do need does coming in because they help draw in those big bucks. So Jesse came out and uh, got to hunt his first got to harvest, his first deer during the youth rifle season. He sent me a few clips and he recorded them on his phone vertically, but that's okay. So here, enjoy this while we get settled in. What are we fixing to do? Fixing to go find for my deer. Find for, for your deer. deer. We're gonna go look for your deer. Yeah. All right. All right. We got to start over here where you shot her. Okay. See if we find any blood. Yeah. All right. Stop right here. There she is right there. She's down. She's down. She's what? Right there here? Yep. Yep. Got her. Raise your head up here. Just leave her there. Raise your head up here. Hey there, Jesse's first deer. Good job, buddy. for a second so far we've only seen one deer all day but he was out here for like five minutes yeah he skirted the back of the field like i said he probably would but that was we had a coyote just come in he was probably 150 160 yards out it would have been it would have been a pretty tough shot with that muzzle loader long shot on a coyote but we're not gonna pass up the opportunity to take a predator out for sure but we got about 20 minutes of legal shooting line left. Still hoping for a big buck to show up. Dang it. I kind of wanted to shoot him bad. Dead coming. That was a big deer. Kind of too late. Dang. that you want me to shoot because I already got down to 10. So I'm trying to put my tags on big ones now. 
Oh, that was a big deer too, though. He just snuck up on us. Yeah. I guess he might be over there right now because of the jump. Because the big track. Yeah, he, the, that's what I was going to say. The, he just skirted around us completely, popped out, barely in the field for a few seconds. And then I just got a notification of our pig trap. Dude, look, 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 look at it. <laughs> Hang on, we're gonna look at the pig trap camera. It's just getting too dark, you can't tell very well. I don't think that's the same deer that was in this field. And that deer, we got the alert like 20 seconds after the deer walked out of the field, so. Well, look how tall it is compared to that one. It looked just like him. It looks like him, it could be. He had to run through the trees to get there that quick, though. He was scared through the field pretty fast. But we had a buck come in. <laughs> we got him in a trap. Drop it. No, I'm not doing that. He just jumped right out. Well, no big bucks were taken tonight. We did have a really good encounter there for about 15 seconds with a really nice buck. Um, there's some big bucks running around on the property and I think eventually we'll catch up with one. But uh, today is actually Halloween. We're not trick-or-treating. It's the first year that I can remember since DJ and I met that we're not trick-or-treating with kids. Houston decided he was not uh, interested in trick-or-treating this year. He'd rather go deer hunting. So, I'm not going to say I've been waiting for a long time to get to this point, but my youngest kid is old enough to say he's not interested in trick-or-treating and we can go deer hunting. So, that's a score for the dad department, in my opinion. Uh, I'm sure we'll miss it eventually, but, you know, it is what it is. In other news, now I know things are delayed, so you guys are going to be seeing this a couple days after the fact, but I just got off the phone with Sarah, which is our good buddy, cameraman Ron's wife. Uh, he calls her the PYT, you know. Uh, Ron is still in ICU. I talked about this on a video the other day. Um, I talked to Sarah for about 15 minutes on the way home, so he's still in ICU. They're doing dialysis. Uh, he, he basically had a pancreatitis a pancreas pancreatitis attack that led to his kidney shutting down and a whole plethora of other problems internally and after his kidney shut down they really he was in the hospital for a day or two and they end up having to move him to ICU and he's been on a ventilator still on a ventilator still very heavily sedated but she said the doctors do feel like he's making improvements and they were hoping to get him weaned off of the ventilator today but that didn't happen um they're thinking with the dialysis getting his kidneys back going and ah, so many things i don't know i can't even imagine um ron's a young guy he's not like an old an old man that is having severe health issues because of his age it's just a freak deal but uh he is still as of the time of filming this which like i said is Halloween. So October 31st, he is still in ICU. Hopefully by the time you guys see this, he's, uh, you know, doing a lot better, but I wanted to keep you guys in the loop, keep you guys up to date. Cause I know a lot of you are, are praying for him. And I know, I know Sarah and his parents and their kids and everybody really appreciate all of that. So, um, it's going to be a, sounds like it's going to be a long road to recovery. And, um, with all the pancreas problems it's probably pushed him into for she said probably going to push him into being a full-blown diabetic which he never was before so i don't know all the details but anyways guys uh keep sending up those prayers for cameraman ron captain ron <laughs> oh my goodness um i can't imagine so anyways guys that's all i've got for today busy day a lot going on uh, tomorrow's probably going to be an even busier day. Got a lot of other things to do. A lot of stuff going on at the merch place. A lot of stuff going on here and there and here, there and everywhere. And we still, still got to find some time to get in the woods to chase these big bucks. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.